Are you starting out on YouTube and looking for a camera that's under $1,000? Have you heard that getting better image quality out of a camera versus your cell phone is reality and possible? Well, in this video, I'm gonna talk to you about the Sony ZV-E10 and why this camera is probably the best under $1,000 camera that you can buy in 2024. Now, the Sony ZV-E10 has been out for two years. Does that make it a terrible camera? Absolutely not. If you're a beginner and you're looking for an interchangeable lens camera, this camera is the one to go for. It's an APS-C camera, which is gonna give you great image quality, including a blurry background. If it's important to you that you get those type of features, then an APS-C camera is a great way to start. You can start this thing off in auto mode and you'll be perfectly fine recording videos time and time again. And when you're ready to step up to that next level and start shooting in some sort of manual or custom modes, this camera has you covered. Now it's super lightweight and it's also very compact. As you can see right here, it's very compact. And it also has this three capsule microphone up on the top, which is going to give you better audio quality than the standard microphone that comes in most mirrorless cameras. And this camera also comes with a fully articulating touch screen. Now when I say touch screen, I mean that it's a tap to focus. This is not going to give you the full touch screen experience that you're going to see in most of the newer Sony cameras, but this camera is going to give you enough ability to be able to tap to focus. And sometimes that's enough for a beginner to really work. It also has this zoom rocker right here on front. So it can take any lens, prime lens, zoom lens, it doesn't matter. And it can make it into a zoom capable lens by using Sony's clear image zoom technology. Now here's the deal. This camera is an eight bit video camera. What does that mean? That basically means that it's going to record eight bits worth of color. Now, some of the newer higher end models are going to have 10 bit color. That is a lot more color information. But if you're just starting out shooting in the standard mode or the movie mode is going to give you great results straight out of camera. You just expose properly for whatever scene that you're currently shooting. And this camera is going to come through and bang out an exceptional image quality for you. I did say that this camera will be there for you when you're looking to grow. It has S-Log2 and S-Log3, along with Hyper Log Gamma, HLG, 2 and 3. Now those are gonna allow you to do additional color grading and get a little bit more out of this camera. Now most people are gonna be completely fine just shooting in the standard picture profile, but when you're ready to upgrade and ready to move along and start shooting in those log formats, it's there for you and it's ready for whenever you are. This thing also has eye detect autofocus, which is great because when it detects a human, it's going to go ahead and grab the eye and hold on to it. Now, let's say you want to shoot small pits. You're shooting crazy cat videos. I don't know what you're doing. Maybe dog videos. Who knows? This thing does have animal eye detect, which will allow for some pets to be picked up using their eye detect. I know even on my dogs, it doesn't always grab the eye. Even on my expensive Sony a7S III, it can miss focus trying to grab that eye, but it will at least get the dog's face. So the whole face will be in focus. Now this camera is very easy to use. You can pick it up and you can use it. It even comes with this nice little furry dead cat thing that you can slide over the microphone to prevent wind noise. All right, so now I've decided to go outside and do a little bit of a vlogging test here. I got the kit lens on here with Sony 16 to 50 millimeter OSS version. It is a 3.5 to 5.6 variable aperture. Right now I have it at 16 millimeters and I'm currently shooting an S-Log3. You're gonna try out the dynamic range on this camera, even though it's only 8-bit, but it's worth giving it a shot. Now this camera is very lightweight. I don't have the included windscreen on the microphone. I will be putting that on here in a second to give you what the audio quality sounds like now. Mostly it is a calm day. Earlier it was, oh, there's the wind. see if that helps the audio. All right, so now I'm back and I have the wind muff on here. Hopefully it is dampening some of this wind that we're experiencing. Now it's not a hugely windy day. It's probably about a 15 mile per hour wind, 10 to 15 mile per hour wind, but it is enough where it's probably gonna disturb some audio. So this is what the audio quality would sound like if you use the dead cat that comes with the Sony ZV-E10. So let's go ahead and listen. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you like maybe the ultimate vlogging setup. What I'm gonna do is I have here my Sony ECM M1 
microphone, I believe is, is what it's called. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch it up. And I have, I have my Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 with my uh, Tiffin Black Sand 3 filter and my Peter McKinnon filter I left at home. So we'll have to go ahead and crank up the shutter speed on this one as well. So let's go ahead and test that out and see how that audio quality sounds along with image quality. Okay, so now I'm back with the Sony ZV-E10. I have the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 shooting at 1.4, might as well go wide open. And then I have that Sony ECM M1 microphone. And right now I don't have any low pass filter, low cut filter, noise canceling, anything like that put on this microphone. I just have the furry dead cat on here. So wondering if the audio quality sounds better with this on. I also have it set at minus 10 dB to help uh, maybe eliminate some of that noise. And I have it directionally pointed straight at me. So now this combo, if you can get the camera and the lens used, you could probably get it under a thousand bucks. That microphone though is going to be quite expensive. You could maybe go down to something like the ECM B10 microphone or the G1 microphone. That's, that's another one that's going to probably give you good audio quality as well. But this is what the image quality would look like if you crank up the shutter and shoot wide open at f1.4. Now I don't have the stabilization on, but we'll go ahead and give it a quick stabilization test. So I'm walking here with the with the Sigma 16 millimeter. No active stab on, just have this thing totally wide open with no stabilization. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and now turn on the active stab and you'll see how much it crops in on your footage. Okay, so now we are still shooting wide open at f1.4. I have put on the active stab. As you can see, it really crops in a lot. Basically, if you're looking for a vlog head, then this is what you're going to get. I did put the low cut filter on the microphone, so this way we can see if there's any difference. Now, I will turn in the same direction that I was at before. There we go. Now, hopefully, this sounds a little bit better because I have that low cut filter on it. I'm going to go ahead and walk, and as you can see, I think it does a better job. Hold on, let's see if we can hold it. There we go. Now we're holding it a little bit more steady, but the only problem is that you're really cropped in here and it's gonna be very difficult to vlog with this thing. So I'm gonna go ahead, what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna switch back to the kit lens, which has OSS, optical stabilization. So it will hopefully give us um, some stabilization. I'll do the standard stab versus the active, and I'm gonna turn the microphone to the noise canceling. That's gonna hopefully cut out on almost all the wind. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so now we are shooting at 16 millimeters with the OSS on. That's the only downside with this lens is if you're gonna hold it underneath with the lens, you do run the risk of possibly zooming in on yourself. So as you can see, if you add a digital mic and and also maybe get some better glass. The image is gonna look good, but you could definitely get away with just a kit lens. And hopefully, I haven't listened to the audio yet, but hopefully the audio with that provided windscreen is enough to cut out some of this wind. So I'm gonna head back home. It is freezing out here. It's March and it's like 17 degrees. It's cold. Not normally this cold, but it's pretty damn cold. So let's go ahead and head inside and we'll finish up this video. So this thing is super easy to use. It's easy to pick up. You can shoot excellent video and photos with this camera. So don't let the ZV line, which is the Gen Z vlogger, don't let that be a deterrent for you to get this camera even for still photos. This camera doesn't have a viewfinder, but I find that the LCD screen is good enough to be able to at least nail focus. Now, if you're looking to get time lapses or super slow motion, this thing does have S and Q mode. And what's really nice is that right at the top, top of this camera. There is the S and Q switch, so you can easily switch between photos, video, and S and Q mode. This thing, you can get it for $6.98 without a lens, or you can pick up this kit lens, which I highly recommend picking up the kit lens if you're brand new starting out in photo or video. Now, don't let anybody tell you that a kit lens is gonna be a piece of garbage. It will ultimately suffice for beginning videographers. Now, do you need something that's gonna give you a blurrier background? Probably, and maybe you wanna get that. And that's where something like the Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 comes into play. This lens is gonna give you that really blurry background, but it is also gonna make the camera a little bit heavier, a little bit less compact. And this lens is gonna come in around $359 but you can pick it up used on the used market for about 250, maybe 300. Getting a good piece quality glass is very important whenever you pick up a camera. And getting an APS-C piece of glass that's gonna last you for years to come, that's what this Sigma 16 millimeter F1.4 is. It's gonna give you that creamy bokeh background and it's gonna be what separates this Sony ZV-E10 from just a basic cell phone video. So if you are looking to step up your game as far as 
image quality goes, I would highly recommend picking up this lens to pair with this. In fact, I'll go ahead and I'll pair up my review of this 16 millimeter at the end of the video so that you can see for yourself how good this lens really is. So again, if you're looking to pick up something that's going to be under a thousand dollars and give you what you need, this is a great starter camera. It's going to have almost everything you need. It's got a good, decent microphone on top that's going to capture audio. Is it going to be as good as a shotgun mic or some of that nature? No, not at all, but it's going to be good enough. It's going to be better than most still photo cameras as far as that audio goes. And if you're somebody like me and you're shooting maybe like a talking head video like this, you could always get a boom arm and boom a microphone out of shot. And that's going to ultimately make your audio even that much better. Listen, if you have any comments or questions about the Sony ZV-E10, feel free to leave those down in the comment box below. I'd be happy to answer those. And I love getting your feedback on all these videos. If you like this video, I'm sure you're going to like the video on the screen now. It's about that 16 millimeter Sigma lens that I was just talking about my full review. Feel free to click on it and I'll see you on that video next. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and that bell notification so you don't miss out on my future videos. Go ahead. I'll see you on that Sigma video now. Go ahead. I got gotcha. you.